Hello, it's great to have you with us. In the Bible, Jesus was asked some pretty difficult questions. Today, we're going to look at one of them. And Jesus' answer might just turn your view of Christianity upside down. This episode is part of a series we're putting out going through Mark's Gospel. If this is the first one you've listened to or watched, why not check out some of the earlier ones where I explain a bit more about who Jesus is and why he came. The section we're looking at today is Mark chapter 12 and verses 28 to 34. There's a link in the video description to an online Bible if you want to make use of it. Have you ever heard of the radio program Desert Island Discs? The format of the show is an interview with a famous person. What makes it different is that through the interview they answer this question. If you were to be marooned on a desert island and could only have eight tracks of music, one book and one luxury, what would you choose? I wonder, how would you answer that question? To be honest, I think I'd find it hard. I love lots of music, different styles and different songs and pieces. My favourites fluctuate with my mood. Trying to pick eight that I'd always be happy with as the eight would be difficult. Then only one book? Often in questions like this it specifies you can't pick the Bible, so if that's given, what would I choose? Well, I don't have a favourite. I find it hard to go along the shelf and out of all the books I have say, that's the one. Then what about the luxury? I don't think I'd even know where to start. To be honest, if I was Jesus in this passage, I think that would be my answer to the question he's asked. In verse 28, a teacher of the law asked Jesus, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Now, what's the scope of this question? In one sense, it could include all the commands in the Old Testament. But more likely it refers to the Torah, which is the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. How many commands would that be? Well, if we're sticking just to the Torah, that's 613 commands. That's a big list. How do you narrow that down to one? Is it even possible? Well, Jesus tells us it is. In verses 29 and 30, he gives his reply. The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. But he doesn't stop there. He carries on. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Of all those 613 commands, which is the most important? Jesus says above everything else, the command to love God, the one and only God, and then coming in a close second, love others. If you forget all the rest, don't forget these. There are no other commands as great as these ones. Why is that the case though? Why does Jesus focus on these two? Well, there are two reasons. First, these two commands actually encompass every other command in the Bible. In Matthew's Gospel, we are told that Jesus gave this explanation. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. What he's saying is this. These two commandments are the core of it all. All the rest are an explanation. Imagine a fountain that sprays water in multiple directions. There's one reservoir of water and many spouts as it shoots all over the place. The reservoir of God's commands is love God and love others. All the other commands are the spouts of water that work it through in different scenarios. So that's one reason why these commands are so important. What about the second? I want you to notice something about these commands. They don't just deal with the externals of our life. They get to the core of our being. When we think of love, we think of the heart. We think of something that stems from inside. And that's where Jesus is directing us here. True, we need to be careful that we don't merely equate love here with emotion. Notice the description of how we're to love God. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This love is to be worked out in every fibre of our being. It is a commitment to worship, honour, and obey God in everything we do. Similarly, look at the command to love others. 
The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. This is more than a warm feeling towards someone. It is a commitment to constantly and continuously seek the good of someone else. We are all committed to our own happiness, our own good. That never comes difficult to us. Jesus says we should be equally committed and equally as passionate about the good of others. So this love is more than emotion, but this love is definitely something that flows from within. The teacher of the law shows us this in verse 33. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Burnt offerings and sacrifices were commanded in the law, but they could be done without a love for God. It was possible to just go through the motions. That's not what God is after. One of the issues that Jesus had with the religious leaders of his day was the hypocrisy that he saw in their lives. Outwardly, they seemed to be living a life that followed God's commands, yet inwardly, they didn't love him or listen to him. And ultimately, it was just a show. No, Jesus says, we don't follow God by acting a part or putting on a show. We follow God by loving him and loving others. I wonder, how do you view Christianity? What do you think it's all about? Do you see it as a list of do's and don'ts? Is it a set of ceremonies and practices? Or is it something more? At the heart of what it means to be a follower of God are two straightforward commands. Love God and love others. That's what Christianity should be about. Now, how does that change things for you? That's all till next time, when we're going to look at who impresses Jesus the most. If you want to be notified, do subscribe to the podcast on Apple or Spotify, like our Facebook page or subscribe and hit the notifications bell on our YouTube channel. Hopefully, see you next time.